All right, what's up guys? In this episode of the vlog, we're gonna take some audio from a podcast that I recently did with a guy named Chase Tuning. You should definitely check him out. He's got a number of different podcasts and the actual podcast was on podcasting. But I thought it'd be interesting to take some of the audio from that podcast and then layer in all of the different interviews and podcasts and different settings and virtual, all the different things we've done in the podcasting world over these last two and a half years and really encourage you that if there is something that you are interested in, start a podcast. It's super easy, don't overcomplicate it, just make it happen, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with the results. The first reason why I wanted to start podcasting was just this desire to be able to give back and provide value to people. What I realized uh, selfishly through the process is it became the way I learned the best. And so for me to go read a book, yeah, I'll, you know, I'll retain some of it, not a lot. Uh, if I watch anything that's visual, so any type of video, I uh, get a lot more out of. But if I can have a conversation with something with someone about a topic, I absorb everything. And so, like, I could interview the author of a book and never read the book, and I could tell you way more about that book than if I had just read the book alone. And so, for me, it was just a a good reason to have significant, impactful conversations with people that I wanted to learn from. You know, for me to reach out to a uh, Andy Frisella, um, you know, you name ex entrepreneur influencer and say, Hey, I'd love to have 30 minutes of your time. Are you available this week? You know, I probably wouldn't get a response or, or a polite no, but then, but all of a sudden now that you've got a podcast, it doesn't even have to have a lot of analytics behind it. Just that you have a podcast, we'd love to have you on. Um, next thing you know, you're spending an hour with that person, building a relationship, learning new things. And, uh, it's, it's been one of the greatest things I've ever done, I think for my own personal development. Uh, but then also just the value that people are able to get being a fly on the wall for those conversations. One of the unique things about our group here is that we, we act quick. So when we have an idea, we just act on it, execute. We don't really get bogged down in all the details of what software and what you know equipment do we need and where are we going to host it and all the different things that people get bogged down in and paralysis of analysis. And then six months later, they haven't started the podcast. So we just said, hey, we're going to start a podcast. What should we call it? We went through every sales goat, sales lion, sales, whatever. Came up with sales wolves. We're like, cool, sales wolves. Somebody throw a logo together and let's just put it up. We had the cheapest equipment possible in the beginning um, and literally just Googled like podcast kit. Um, some of the stuff that we still use. And we just sat down and recorded the first episode and it was really rough and it got better over time. Um, but I think the important thing there is just to start and that none of that stuff really matters anyways. I mean, yes, the audio quality is a big deal way down the road, but in the beginning stages, it's just about going through those motions, getting into that cadence of, interviewing or recording content on your own and the actual process of putting it out there. Uh, it's just getting into that rhythm and making that a part of your you know natural daily routine, weekly routine. And so I think for us, it's just always been, okay, idea, implement, idea, implement, and not trying to spend too much time in the weeds. And, um, you know, when, when the goal is to provide value, a lot of the stuff like the quality of the mixing and this and that, you know, if people get the core message from what we were trying to deliver in a podcast, that's all I really care about. It was just creating multiple different ways people consume uh, my content. You know, if they want an audio podcast, then I'm going to give them an audio podcast. They want to watch, you know, the vlog, then go watch the vlog. If they want to, you know, go on Instagram, Facebook, I want to be kind of omnipresent in whatever way is uh, most comfortable to the person that's trying to learn and trying to grow and trying to become the best version of themselves. And so I think specifically with the interview style podcast, that's been a huge thing to draw in other audiences to my brand. Um, and being able to use, you know, the influence of those people to do that. Um, that's also been one of the biggest areas of growth just in relationships and the connections that I've built with the people I've had on my podcast. I mean, I've got many great, great friends that the first time we ever talked was on a podcast. And so, you know, that side of it has been extremely rewarding for me and will lead to who knows what type of future business down the road.
And for those that are in a place where they can more streamline that process of driving revenue through a podcast, it's wide open. Like if, if we had decided that from day one, we could have a hundred percent capitalized on that. It just wasn't something that I was really bought into myself, um, in the purpose that I had at that time. Um, uh, but it's a hundred percent <laughs> the most insane vehicle for being able to drive traffic to whether it's your website or it's a specific offer or things like that. Um, so for those that are in more of that mindset, yeah, I look at it two ways. If you look at, you know, legacy, and then if you look at, you know, making money, you can do both simultaneously with podcasts and you can create incredible content that'll live forever and you can be solely focused on that and you're going to make more money or you can be solely focused on just making more money, but this content still is going to live forever and it's going to create that legacy. So it's kind of like a double-edged sword and whichever one you're more focused on, both are going to happen. So I think there's there's been a number of keynote um, opportunities that have arised from the podcast. Yep, public speaking, um, which have been lucrative and you know have kind of taken my brand to another level. It's a very different you know, world when you go from, you know, how someone hearing you on a podcast to seeing you live in person. And it was kind of the natural progression of where I wanted my brand to go. So that created a lot of opportunity there. Um, I think a lot of the relationships, I'm trying to think of a, you know, specific, I mean, there's been projects that I've put in place with people that I've had on my podcast before. Uh, like I know the first time me and Gerard Adams ever met, we had him on the podcast and then we became, you know, good friends and started hosting uh, some dinners together at different locations and did some projects like that together, which would have never happened had we not connected and had a really powerful conversation on the podcast. And I think those are kind of the X factor things that you just, you never know what could happen. You know, all of a sudden, all of a sudden you're spending an hour with somebody and then three months later, it could be a completely new business that you've launched with that person or partnered with that person on. I think that's that kind of X factor that people going into the podcasting world need to be aware of that there are going to be opportunities that arise if you take advantage of those. Uh, but it all boils down to relationships. It's all, it's all relationships, whether it's a one-off or whether it's like a more monologue style, just solo podcast in the relationship that you have with the people that are listening or in the interview style where you're building a relationship with an actual person while other people are being able to listen to that all play out. Uh, I think there's so many different catalysts for, for future success and growing traffic through the podcast. And so, you know, I think there is becoming more of a trend of people just wanting to be a fly on the wall and experience what other people are experiencing. Um, and I think that that's going to get to a granular detail, uh, as this trend continues of people just wanting to, like, if I was going to do something that I'm going to already do and that I enjoy, there are people that would like to experience that with me. And so that's what I've been focused on now are like, what are the things that I just enjoy doing the challenging things, whether it's physical, um, or whatnot. And why don't I just create an event around that and have people be able to participate in that with me? I'm going to be doing it anyways. And I know people will get value from it. And so I think that's going to be a big trend is more experiential, experiential, is that a word? Um, <laughs> stuff um, where they're actually like interacting and doing the same things alongside with you, whether that's virtually or flying in and doing it in person. I think there's going to be a lot more of that. Um, but the reality is, I mean, people are going to podcasts to learn and grow. And so if you don't have one, you're at a significant disadvantage. And I think from a sales perspective, because, you know, I come from a sales background, you know, to be able to reach out to potential customers or clients, especially high level, like when you're looking at CEOs of companies, being able to invite a CEO of a huge whale of an opportunity for your sales company to be able to invite them onto your podcast rather than cold calling them to get a meeting with them to discuss your product or service to be able to first kind of start that conversation by saying, Hey, I've got a podcast where I interview successful CEOs. would love to have you come on. It's kind of an ego thing. They don't get asked all the time to get on podcasts, but now you just spend an, but now you just spent an hour getting to know this CEO and you have an actual relationship with that person now, which can parlay into the conversation that you originally wanted to have, which was how to earn their business. I think that will be kind of the, um, the transactional scale at which podcasting could really help people launch their business. If it was just for that, like this is my new cold call. I cold call people to get them on my podcast, not to buy my product. 
once I've gotten them on my podcast and you've established a relationship, now I can talk to them about what it is that I actually do that I think can help them. Any business right now, if they just look at what is a segment of people that we are trying to reach, what would a podcast look like that would only have those type of people on as guests? Create the title around it, create the logo, just throw it up real quick and then invite your pers- first person on. Like if it's HR people, like I don't have any interest in HR, but I'm more than happy to start a podcast where I interview HR people on interesting, current, up-to-date topics and then DM your first HR professional of a big company and say, hey, I'd love to have you on my you know, HR Today podcast. And next thing you know, you got a relationship that's built. It's impossible to spend an hour or even 30 minutes on a podcast with someone and not build a relationship with them. And once you've got that relationship built, the rest is easy. Yeah, and I think the, um, the added bonus is whether you're doing it just to attract a certain person that you can ultimately sell or you're doing it for providing value, or if it's a combination of the two, at the end of the day, you're going to grow through this process. Like, there's no way to have conversations with people and recorded live conversations with people and not grow and not learn and not better yourself. So that's kind of the added bonus is that whatever your intent is on the front end, you are going to become a better business person, a better conversationalist, a better interviewer, a better just all around person by the things that you learn from all these people that you end up interacting with just start it. Uh, You could do it so easily. There's so many different, just Google how to start a podcast and an hour later you should be ready to go. This is not a month long, week long, year long journey to figure out how to get into podcasting. It's, It's super simple or find somebody else that knows how to do it and pay them to do it. Super easy.